you are listening to the Heal Your Life With Us podcast. I am Kaylin. And I am Chrissy. Are you ready to get healing? I am so ready to get healing. (laughs) I love how ready you are. So ready. All right. We are on episode three. Let's talk about stress. And Chrissy's going to make me sing this. I am. Let's talk about stress, baby. (laughs) Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about yeah. all the good things and the bad things that may be. That's right. Yep. Let's talk about it. That was my version of salt and pepper. <laughs> I love them. I love them. We're going to talk about stress and how grief, loss, trauma, all the bad things can become a superpower. Mm-hmm. So get ready to get deep. Uh, it is not an easy thing. No, it's not. Stress is not easy. It sucks. No. And it's everywhere all the time. You have stress literally right now. Even listening to this podcast, you're like, I'm stressed out about this. I'm stressed (laughs) about that. Uh, Even though you're having the time of your life on this podcast, uh, you're still stressed. So it's not going to end. It's not going to change. I'm not going to solve that problem. Chrissy's not going to solve that problem for you, but we're going to talk about how we handled it and what we did wrong and how we're working on doing it better and how that impacts your health. It's very true because the more stress that you have, the more energy buildup you're having inside your body, which is causing all of these ailments and illnesses and diseases and all the things that you feel. Mm -hmm. And it compounds itself inside of you so that you may produce a disease or produce bad things inside of you. Now, don't get me wrong. There are such things as good stress. There is something that you need to keep you going and to keep you moving throughout the day, like little tiny things that happen that propel you forward and keep you going. After all, if you didn't have stress, you'd probably be literally laying on the couch watching Netflix all day long because you're like, I'm not stressed out about money and I don't care about health and my family. Like you need a little bit, right? But we have a little bit plus 9 million. (laughs) So yes. We're going to figure out what happened to us and why stress impacted our gut, our thyroid, Chrissy's gallbladder, as she talked about last episode. So I think it's important to understand the different levels of stress because I didn't know about this. I was just like, I'm so stressed out. What do I do? And we found out exactly what we do. So let's actually take a reflective mirror approach. Chrissy, how do you handle stress? You want to know how I handle stress. Well, I handle it in two different ways, a good way and a bad way. And when I handle it in my, I would say it's my bad way, but only because I'm not handling it. So as an Enneagram one, I will go to a bad side of an Enneagram four when I am stressed. That's what ones do. They go to like the bad side of a four, which is like, I become cynical and I do 9 million things at once. So I start like 900 projects and I'm working on all of them, but like intensely. And that's kind of how I avoid the stress, which is not really the healthiest way to do it because I need to confront the stress. I need need the stress to be like front and center rather than shoving it back down and just occupying my mind to do the 900 projects so that I don't have to think about the stress. And I do have like stress relieving techniques um, that I, you know, when I want to handle this stress, I talk it out, walk it out. Um, I take a bath, lots of meditations. Um, I usually go for like a massage or I go do something relaxing where I'm trying to take my stress levels and all my cortisol that's spiking through the roof and bring it back down to earth. My favorite thing is Chrissy will text me and she'll be like, I'm washing the blinds. I've already power washed my shutters. I cleaned (laughs) my driveway. I reorganized the pantry. And now I'm about to take everything from my basement and put it into my attic. And then I'm going to rearrange Emma's room and then Matt's. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean my kitchen. And I'll just call you in an hour. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you stressed out about? Like, that's right. Can you just not clean your shutters? Um, So it's okay to clean it out. I mean, I think cleaning is therapeutic. It's amazing. But when you're not dealing, you are just kind of like putting it under the rug. You're literally cleaning it under the rug. So I know. It's so funny. (laughs) So I think it's important to say to yourself, what am I escaping? 
grasping right now? Like, what am I actually running from instead of actually dealing it, facing it head on and saying, I need to really, truly get through this. And you have to move through something to get over it. So I think it's awesome that you just shared that whole thing because you're aware of it. Maybe you weren't aware of it a year or two ago. So saying what you actually do during a stressful situation gets it out there and helps you heal from it. And you, you're like, oh, that's not that bad then. You know, you really kind of work through it and it's not that bad. Things in your head tend to be so much worse than they are. So they're just thoughts. They don't control you. So my stress is so funny. So I'm a little bit different. Um, as an Enneagram seven, I used to go party when I was stressed out. I'd be like, I'm not dealing with this. I can handle this with nine different things out in the world, like shots and friends, and I'll come home and feel even worse. So it didn't work. Um, I would also obsess over the bad. Uh, as an Enneagram seven, my wings are one and five and my five is like the investigator. And so I would obsess about what was wrong. And sometimes Chrissy would have to say, Kaylin, stop looking up night thyroid nodules and start looking at solutions. And so I would be talking about what's wrong with me, talking about the pain, talking about how I couldn't handle it, talking about what is not going to happen and what happens when we talk about things, they come true. So a lot of our stress us is our uh, weakness and that's okay. You're completely normal. If any of thing, these things ring true for you and you vacuumed your house 14 times today because you're stressed out, that's okay. It's totally but fine. Your, your, you're fine. your floors are amazing today. Like have yeah. all the guests over tomorrow. <laughs> like clean all the houses and obsess over all of the things. But when you are done, realize what you didn't deal with, because what you didn't deal with is the one thing that's holding you back from healing. So I think it's important to understand that, you know, you're doing this, you know, what you have to do and just face it. Okay. I'm having stress right now. I am having stress in work, family, health, whatever it is and say, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to call my friend. I'm going to walk it out. Like she said, whatever it is, but understand where you're going with your stress and just take it with you. You know, don't take it out on other people. That would we'll be take it out on other people, but we yeah. do take it out on ourselves. Like, um, I'll, I'll go to you and you'll be like, why are you, why are you cleaning the blinds and power wash the house and just cleaned, you know, three RVs? Why what's happening with you? And like, I'll get a text message from you and you'll just send me all this like scientific research on like weird stuff. And I'm like, Kaylin, I know you're stressed out, but get off the internet, get off the <laughs> internet, put the book down. You yeah. don't need to know this right now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't WebMD yourself when you're Don't stressed Don't WebMD yourself, right? That you go straight to WebMD when you're Don't stressed. Google it. Don't do it. Don't look at the pictures. Don't do it. Just look at the answers. Just look at what you can do, what you're, where you're going, because you can get really caught up in it and it can stress you out even more, which is counterintuitive to what you're even trying to do. <laughs> so we know our weaknesses. Let me tell you, it took us a long time to get there though. So if this is the first time hearing this and you're like, oh, that's me or, oh, what do I stress out about? Go inward, look at it, face it, get yourself together and know that tomorrow's a new day. Like literally you're going to deal with something else tomorrow. And if the stress keeps coming and piling on, don't talk about Murphy's law and things happen in threes. And well, I'm going to, you know, it's just going to, woe is me. What good happened today? What good happened to you today? Cause you can find it anywhere you go. I started doing this thing. I would drive to my chiropractor's office and it's 12 minutes away. I turn the radio off. I'm in my zone in my car by myself. Nobody's with me. And I literally spit hot gratitude fire. Like I literally am like, I'm grateful for the sun. I'm grateful for Chrissy. I'm grateful for my podcast. I'm grateful for my hair. I'm grateful for like my dog, like random things. I'm grateful for my robe. You will see the robe on this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'm yes, grateful for my, everything I have. I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. And by the time I get there, I forgot what I was stressed out about. And I'm like living in this gratitude moment. The first couple of gratefuls, you're like, this is dumb. I don't believe it. And then you're just like, what else can I find? What else can I hit? And it becomes a really nice, just getting out of your own head moment. And that's a great way to bring your cortisol levels down. Just Oof. bring them right down on that 12 minute ride of all the gratefuls, because that's what we ultimately want to do is not have high cortisol because that's the stress hormone. And that's what makes us crazy. Oh my gosh. 
gosh, my cortisol levels were like punching me in my own face. Yeah. Like I don't even, I didn't even know they were high. This is the thing about cortisol is like, you might think I'm good. I'm even, I can handle this. Us as women, what do we want to do? Save the world, right? Like I don't need to stress out of myself. I got all these other people that I need to heal and help save the kids, save the husbands, save the wives, whatever it is. You are not, you put yourself last. Raise your hand if you put yourself last. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So you do, you do, you do. Um, so it's time to maybe think about that. It's okay if you still want to put everybody else first, but you can't ignore stress. You can't ignore when it happens to you. Obviously it's blaring in, the, in your face, but gratitude helps. Um, another thing that I think helps is when you're there and you're in it, just really truly feel it. Like we talked about on the last pod podcast, just, just feel it, just get in it, like rage it out, go to a break room if you have to and smash some stuff. I don't know what you need to do, but do it, but don't live in it short, just get it done and then move on to gratitude. That's yes. my, yeah. as advice. short as you can make these stressful situations, the better off you are with your health, because you need to face the stress in the face. You need to come one-on-one -on -one with it and yep. just be like, hi, stress. I know you're here. Thank you for visiting, but it's time to go. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that leads us to grief, which again, grief is going to happen. Loss is going to happen. Your body does not know how to handle it. I happen to have a very, very, very sensitive body. Like when bad things happen to me, I feel it all over. We're talking headaches, stomach aches. My rib goes out. My hip goes out. I can't move. I'm in the bed. Okay. So when bad things happen to me, I go down, I go down hard. Okay. I learned this about myself and that could be anything from hearing bad news from the world, uh, getting into arguments, losing a loved one. This year I lost a loved one that hit me so hard. I went down for two months. So I don't want that to happen to me again. I want to get stronger in how I handle it. So this year I learned a little bit about grief and how to channel it. Now, this is going to sound different. So be open to, to however you want to handle grief. I'm not, there is no protocol. There's no playbook. You're going to do it however you want. Um, cry it out, have all of the things. But I think if you can harness the power of just that, that person that you lost or that thing that went away, or maybe people wronged you or whatever the grief or loss is, it helped you. It helped you move through whatever you needed to move through. Yeah. Yeah. Grief is really, really hard. That's a hard one. Um, and it, it it's grief and loss together. And it can be a, a person that you lose a job that you lose, um, a house that you lose. Um, anything. It could be a pet that you lose. It can be anything that is dear and near to you. And it was, and it's a shocking moment. Um, yeah. that is stress. Yeah. And it's also hard to manage at times and you have to like guide yourself through life and figure out how to manage these situations. I don't know about you, but people say, just cry, right? It's good for you. Like cry it out, like get it out of you, like literally sob. And I'm like, no, I don't want to sob a, because I don't, that means I'm in the feels and I'm accepting that it's real. And also crying hurts me. Crying gives me headaches and backaches and my eyes hurt and my sinuses hurt. And I look like a crazy person. I don't like crying. And you have to sort of just let it go. And then the next day you might feel better. Like that day you're, you're all kinds of hurt, but then the next day you're like, oh, okay, well, this has cleared a little bit of area where I can start sort of mend. And this has moved me into a place of peace. So allow the cries, but physically, if it hurts you, you've got to step up your game with self-care, meaning you've got to hit that with another bath, another meditation, maybe talking to someone, maybe adding better foods to your diet, maybe adding more tools in your game because you're going down and your immune is going down with it. And you're going to get up and wake up the next day. And it's going to be like grief groundhogs day. It's going to happen all over again. That stress is still going to be there. And you're going to be like, okay, I have to deal with this all over again. And my mine was laying in bed at night. 
I waited until the day was over and I was strong for everybody else, strong, strong for everybody else. And then I would get in bed and just crumble, like just tears and I miss him and I, you know, whatever my dad, you know, died. And so it was just very like, I really let my authentic self out and little did I know then that I needed that. I needed that to process. Um, and now when I go to bed at night, I say, good night, dad. Like, thanks. Thanks for the day. Like, appreciate you sending me, you know, your love up there. Like, love you. You know, like I, I have grown from it, but those first couple of months, you really just got to let it go. You do have to let it go. And I'm still trying to teach you to, to cry. I'm still trying to tell her. I'm still trying to tell her. Chrissy tries to make me cry on the daily, y'all. She's like, yeah, I'm like, no, you got to let it out. You got to let it out. Not that I'm like a big giant cry baby because I'm not. I'm actually like in my family. I have have the nickname, the ice princess. So (laughs) you would think I don't cry, but I do cry a lot more than Kaylin does. And I don't cry. I cry for a different reason because if I don't let those cries out, I know they're going to store somewhere inside my body. So I have to let them all out. And it could just be like a, a... a short cry, like a few tears, or it can be like a blubbering, like crying to your pillow. Like you, your mascara is all messed up and you're going to be like a puffy red face for the rest of the entire day. Um, I definitely go through my crying processes when I need to. Um, so we now have a very, um, strong, I think we have a stronger connection now that we both have a parent that we lost. And so I lost my mom nine years ago, very suddenly. And I was 29 and she was 49 when she passed away and which is a whole nother podcast for us. But, uh, I think when your, your dad passed away this year, I think after that happened, it was like, I don't know, our two worlds were already colliding, but I think they just like meshed into one and we have a lot more, um, connect. We have a lot more connection now with that because um, I had to basically, uh, help you and walk you through each stage of grief for that process. And yeah. there's always going to, it takes a long time after you lose somebody for grief. It's not just like bing, bang, boom, you're done. No. Like it's a long process, but I got to the point in my grief with losing my mom that I turned it into a positive thing. And so once I started turning it into a positive thing, the grief kind of just like went away. And like, I always, um, I always feel her around. She's always here. And she had a lot of troubles on earth and it was hard for her to maintain relationships and help people on earth. Cause she really couldn't help herself now that she's passed away. And I say this to Kaylin, um, she helps me more than she ever did actually being on earth. So she still Isn't helps that me. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And you really, really some, did help it's me. mind blowing. Um, it is. But it, you have to always know that if you lose somebody or something, um, they're still around. They're yeah. still here. Even though um, our worlds can't connect us as far as visually and hearing things, um, they're still here. And because I know that, because I know that she can help me more now that she's not here, that helps grief so much. Like so much. You helped me realize that uh, you bought me a beautiful book called Signs. I highly recommend it if you're if, if you've ever lost someone. Laura Flynn Laura Jackson. Lynn Jackson. Laura Lynn yeah. Jackson yeah. Sorry, and it just opens your eyes to understand that you're right. Uh, you know there are angels among us, if you will, but I do believe that you do have to understand your own thresholds when it comes to grief and understand that there, you said it best to me a while back. It's like waves of the ocean. It's literally going to come. It's going to go. My grief happens like that. It'll be, Oh, you know, I'm reminded of it really quickly. And I have to stop myself from calling him on the way out, like, or something where it's just a quick reminder. And I turned those reminders from being something sad and something of, I lost this to, this is him telling me he loves me. This is him saying, everything's going to be okay. You are going to be okay. And so if you flip the script on grief, you can harness it and say, all right, you know, I can either 
say, he's not here with me. I can't do this. I can't call him. I can't express this to him. Or you can say he's right here and he's saying, I want you to be happy. And so I think it's very, very important to whatever they had. You said that there was a lot of troubles on earth with her and same thing with my dad, a very, very complex life. He led, he's out of that now, you know, and, and in a great space. I think that you also want that them to be happy, just like they want you to be happy. So continue on the path of knowing that love is there, whatever that may be, any kind of love and work through it the same as you would with stress, accept it, power through it, move on and use it as a superpower. I think that's very, very important for your health. One thing I will say, tying it back to the heal yourself concept is I would not have been able to handle that if I had not adjusted my diet my supplements, my thyroid issues, like all of that happened before I was able to really truly lose someone. And I would have been such a hot mess if I hadn't have gone down that path first. So if you are on an unhealthy journey right now and you're shoving your face with cheeseburgers and booze and pills and the things that are lowering your spirit and your mind and your body, your grief may be 10 times worse. So you do need to realize what you put in your body helps you to handle stress. I am unfortunately a person that used to deal with high anxiety. I have lost someone very, very early in my life. I was at a party when I was young and I lost uh, someone due to a murder. And that was a good friend of mine. And it was my birthday party. I had invited him to the birthday party and I held on to this fact that it was my fault for probably a decade. I went into pure panic mode. I went into anxiety attacks. I mean, we called all the doctors, got on all the meds. And I held on to that for so long that I didn't even really process the death of that. And I think that that has a big part of my disease or diagnosis today. So if you can understand that the things that you lose are I wouldn't say for a reason, but there is a reason, there is a lesson, there is a, a path there. You can move through that a little bit better, but it is really important to keep your body and your mind healthy. Yes. Very important because like she said, uh, the longer you let that stress build up inside your body, it's going to find a place of your weakness inside your body and it's going to manifest there. So wherever your weak part is in your body, maybe it's your gut, maybe it's your brain, maybe it's your um, your thyroid, your hormones, wherever your weak place is, you don't know where that weak place is. It, your body knows and it's going to find it. And that's where it's going to store itself and live there and grow. And yeah. later on, you know, five, 10 years down the road, you're going to, this ailment's going to pop up and you're like, how did I get this? What yeah. happened? You had no idea. It was stress you had 10 years before because you never dealt with it. So funny story about anxiety. So Chrissy and I sort of had our own anxiety battles, we'll say. Uh, so Mike, our lovely nutritionist, and the reason that we're here, uh, suggested scap. Skullcap is the worst name ever, but it is a flower and it is simply a sedative to help you sleep. It's supposed to be paired with lemon balm and valerian to help you just relax. It's a relaxation supplement, it comes in a tincture. So Chrissy was like, I just wanted to kind of take the edge off and help me to sleep. So <laughs> Chrissy, <laughs> Chrissy tries it and just about punched her husband in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. So I tried it and I only did like, I think he starts us out with like three drops, right? I think it's three drops. I can't remember. It's a while ago. It was a drop or three drops. And I think it was, which three. I think you took like 10 accidentally. I don't think you maybe, would. maybe it was like a whole dropper. I'm not sure, but you just put it in some juice and you drink it before bed. And it's just like relaxing. It's an herb and it's just like a relaxing thing. And it's just supposed to make you like not think about anything. And you're just going to like, you know, chill out on the couch and go to sleep nice and easy. Well, the next morning I woke up and my husband was like, what is happening to you? He was like, you turned into the incredible Hulk last night and you just like beat me up. Like, throwing legs, arm punching. I had no idea I did it. I didn't know I did any of that. Not a clue. I don't remember. And you were like a zombie the next day. You, and you were I, tired it, and drained. Yes. I could not, it yeah. did not wear off. I took okay. that morning and I'm like leaning up against the side of the shower. I'm like, 
what is wrong with me? I'm like so drugged. Like I couldn't shake it probably for two days. I couldn't shake it. I I said, I said, Mike, um, I love you, but I can't take this. This isn't good. So So, (laughs) you have to pause the skull cap. (laughs) Literally. She called me. She's like, I think I'm done. I'm done with the skull cap. This is the demon juice. I'm done. And I was like, okay. So I didn't try it because of course I didn't know And six months later, I met my wits end with sleep and I'm like, all right, fine. And my husband said, what if it is the best thing that ever happens to you? Just try it. You can always put it down. So I take it and literally I wake up the next day and I'm like, I am eerily calm, like no anxiety, none, like nothing, like no fear, no imposter syndrome. No, I can't, I can't, I can't. I was like, I'm going to fly to the moon and back. I could do anything. I called Chrissy. I was like, skullcap, Kaylin is here. Let's go. (laughs) Mike got on the phone with me the next time. And he's like, uh, what happened to you? And I was like, skullcap, Kaylin, I can't tell you I'm here. Like I'm done. I have not had anxiety since July 6th, 2022. I am not even kidding you. So here's a great example of it's not good for her and it's good for me. So really, truly, you got to try it. You got to hashtag here goes nothing. You have to go in. You do. <laughs> you have to go all in. Just go all in. Because what works for me does not work for Kaylin. And what works for her does not work for me. So we're very opposite. And it's kind of fun that way. We actually, I don't think we have too many things that we love, love, except for progesterone. I think that's our one of our favorite mm-hmm. together, but, uh, we don't, we are very opposite. So you just have to go in and you have to try these things and just try it for yeah. a day and see what happens. Cause like you said, your whole life changed. Yep. And what's the worst that could happen? You punch your husband, you rage out, your you fall asleep a couple of guys. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. You'll be <laughs> fine. Um, all right. We have to wrap up, but your tips for the day from the girls that heal themselves are stress it out get it out, it out, understand, understand your stressors, get it out, cry it out, and then move on and use it as a superpower to learn from it, do better, power through grief. They want you to be happy, no matter what it is, whatever the lesson is, the people that you lost, whatever it is, you got this. We're here with you doing it. We understand that it's going to happen and try things for things you can't handle supplements, chick trips, you know, whatever, whatever it is, try it. Cause you just never know what might happen. You never know. And talk about it with people. You know, you might find some amazing herbal supplement that helps you feel like a million bucks every day. Yes. Yes. You got this. You got this. You got this. We will see you next time. We're going to start talking about food. Yes. Our favorite subject. Oh yeah. I could eat all day. I love food. <laughs> all right. Y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you can also find me on Instagram. My username is Chrissy, C-H-R-1-S-S-Y underscore R-I-C-E. Yes, thank you. Yes, and I am CBC Inked. We'll see you next time. Thank you.